mesotibial band tendinitis, and the other is patellofemoral pain, otherwise known as chondromalacia. Um, the iliotibial band, uh, again, we discussed this before, it starts up here with three muscular attachments, runs down across the outside of the hip, and then comes all the way down here and attaches down here below the knee. It has two functions. It, it terminally extends the knee, so it helps you do that. And it also helps stabilize the knee laterally. So as you're running, it helps prevent excessive movement in this direction. Um, the tendonitis develops when this band starts to rub over the, the lower end of the femur bone and causes irritation and abrasion and pain. Usually, um, that pain starts out very laterally and starts out only with running. So people will notice that as they're running, their knee's getting sore. It usually occurs at foot strike and then initial flexion. So that first 30 degrees of flexion is when people really say, yeah, that hurts right there. And that's when they really start to notice it. Um, it usually goes away with rest and then comes back again when they try to run again. But if people keep on going, eventually it will hurt all the time. Um, one thing to remember is that if you're having these symptoms and your whole knee swells up, if you start to get swelling that involves your entire knee, that's not typical of iliotibial band. And that's something that you should really bring to your doctor's attention. Um, in terms of the biomechanics, poor flexibility of this iliotibial band can be an issue because that increases that rubbing on the outside and also factors that tend to cause increased internal rotation of that hip or increased pronation of that hip will cause additional friction of that iliotibial band here. Lastly, similar to the trochanteric bursitis, if these hip external rotators are weak and you can't stabilize that hip as you're running, you can't keep it externally rotated, then that can also be a factor. In terms of rehabilitation, it's very important initially to rest and then to work aggressively on stretching hip and hip stabilization. Rarely we can inject this if it's not getting better, and very rarely surgery is required. But usually uh, rest and stretching will get the job done, and Lori's going to review that now. Once again, there's that standing ITB stretch where you're going to bring your knee across the midline of your body when standing. You can also do that a similar stretch sitting, and I'm going to bring, again, my knee across the midline of my body. Just pull in, I'll feel the stretch through the outside of my leg here. Or I can also do it kneeling. When I do it kneeling, I'll just once again bring my knee across the midline of my body and then bring the hip off and out to the side. As far as strengthening exercises, again, we can do the hip abduction strengthening exercise. And or another exercise I like to have patients do is sometimes you'll see the knee fall in as you tend to um, flex your knee with weight. So what I'll have patients do is just work on stabilizing it and learn to bring their knee over their foot when they're going up and down on their legs. Great, Larry. thanks. Um, again, I really want to emphasize the importance of recognizing this problem early and stretching frequently and stretching early and not running through it, because almost every time this will get better as long as it's addressed early on. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is patellofemoral pain. Uh, this is the most common cause of anterior knee pain, and generally people will describe symptoms that are right around this kneecap. So it'll be right around the knee, just below, maybe one side or the other, but, but clearly in the front of the knee. Um, this is also referred to as chondromalacia, and technically chondromalacia means uh, a, 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 dis a disease, a wear and tear of the cartilage on the underside of the kneecap. You can have anterior knee pain with or without degeneration of that cartilage. And so I think that's one thing that's important to understand. I think another thing that's important to understand with this problem is that this is not the first sign of knee arthritis. And a lot of people come in with pain in the front of their knee. Um, it's gradually getting worse. And they're concerned that they're, that they're developing arthritis. And this is the beginning of the end for their running. Um, usually that's not the case. And so usually we can get these people better and keep them out there and keep them active. Um, again, usually the pain is in the front of the knee. It's worse with running. It also is often worse with stairs. So people will say when they're going up or down stairs, this bothers them. And it's worse with prolonged flexion. So sitting on an airplane for a long time, uh, sitting in a movie theater, that will, especially when you first stand up and try to get going, your knee will be sore. People will describe uh, patella crepitus, which means kind of a crunching or a grinding under that kneecap when they extend their knee. And uh, another thing that they'll notice is that if they kneel, if they put pressure through into that kneecap, that will be painful. When people see me with this, pain with patella translation or moving their kneecap side to side uh, is common. And again, generally, you do not have a knee effusion. So your knee does not swell up with this problem. And it's important that if your knee is swelling, that you see a physician sooner than later. In terms of the biomechanics, uh, this problem is usually the result of 
uh, poor alignment of this patella. That patella wants to track uh, in a line from the thigh down to the leg and forces that tend to pull this patella off to one side uh, are, the, are the types of things that will tend to cause this problem. A tight iliotibial band or a tight lateral retinaculum, which is this tissue on the side of the knee that will tend to pull this patella to the side can be a factor. Weakness of this muscle right here, which is called the vastus medialis obliquus or the VMO, will, will prevent the uh, the thigh from being able to pull this muscle centrally, excuse me, pull this uh, patella centrally where it wants to be. Another thing that can be a factor here is any of those same factors that tend to cause that hip to internally rotate that will tend to get that kneecap tracking out to the outside. So weakness in these rotators or increased uh, pronation uh, can also be factors. In terms of the rehabilitation, rest and ice are very important initially. Um, NSAIDs can be helpful initially. And then it's very important to work on the flexibility and also the strengthening that Lori is going to address now. One of the um, stretches that I usually have people do with uh, patellofemoral pain is a quad stretch. And usually this is not very well tolerated in the acute stage. But as a person resolves or as the pain uh, symptoms resolve, um, if you bring your foot to your hip, with your hip forward, and what I'm stretching is the muscle on the front of my thigh. This would be a good quad stretch for this kind of problem. The other thing as far as strengthening, um, what we can use is a step or a stair. And what I'll do is I'll have patients or people work on their alignment when they go up and down stairs. They're going to keep their knee in line with their foot and hip and work on coming up the stair as well as down the stair. What frequently you'll see is something like this. And where you're going to work is try and keep the knee in line with your foot. Other exercises that you can do at the gym or even at home is you can do partial squats. You can do something as, as simple as lunges, again, keeping the knee in good alignment. At the gym, you can do leg presses. And that's where you get on the machine where you go to extend your leg. And usually, if your knee is a little bit on the irritable side, you want to start with a few degrees of knee extension to begin with, and then progressively increase the amount of knee bend as your leg tolerates. The one exercise you should all avoid is the one where you put your um, feet behind the um, pad and you attempt to extend your knees like this. This tends to put a, a tremendous amount of um, strain across the front of your knee. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll finish up with a couple foot injuries. Um, first, I want to talk about something called metatarsalgia, which is pain over the metatarsal heads. And the second is plantar fasciitis. Um, Lori's going to help us uh, demonstrate the metatarsal heads here. It's this area right here. It's the end of these metatarsals. And this is the area that really takes a lot of force when you're running. Usually, people will describe pain with push off So when they're pushing off and uh, accelerating off of these metatarsal heads, that causes the symptoms. Um, there's a, a couple different issues that are important to think about. One is that if people tend to have a short first ray, so if this metatarsal here is short, then what happens is the second metatarsal will take more of the impact. And that's a common cause of metatarsalgia here in the second metatarsal. Another thing worth, worth mentioning is there is something called a Morton's neuroma, which is a nerve cyst that usually comes in here between the third and fourth toes. And that Morton's neuroma will cause pain here and also some uh, tingling and some numbness that comes out through these toes. So that's another factor that can sometimes be involved in pain in the metatarsal heads. Um, in terms of the biomechanics, the short first ray, which we mentioned, can be an issue. Um, also, excessive pronation or supination of the foot can be an issue. And uh, we'll have Lori demonstrate that right here. Pronation is when you have a tendency to really roll that foot in, um, where that arch really flattens out. Supination is where there's a tendency for the foot to actually be more on the outside. And we talked about that as being a risk factor for stress fractures. And when you're dealing with foot problems, this puts more stress on the outside metatarsals. And when you come in this way, it puts more stress on the inside metatarsals. Another thing that can be a factor uh, is excessive shoe wear. And most running shoes are designed to be used for anywhere from three to 500 miles. And so if you're using your shoes well beyond that, that can be a risk factor. And uh, so it may be just as simple as getting new running shoes to help decrease this problem. Um, in terms of the treatment, rest is important initially. New shoes uh, may, may be the solution. And then following that, if, if that's not effective, there's different things you can try to do to unweight the tender area. And that includes felt, um, different padding techniques, and also orthotics. And Lori's going to demonstrate uh, how we use an orthotic. So this orthotic um, will help support that pronation that John was talking about that can help put more stress across the front of your um, metatarsals. If I go into the orthotic, it'll help support my arch a little bit more versus 
I don't have the orthotic, my foot will fall in and more of the stress may go into my metatarsals. Another uh, factor to consider too is that um, most running shoes are designed for people that tend to pronate or tend to supinate. And so if you are a supinator in a pronator's shoe or vice versa, that can also be a risk factor. So it's important to talk to your physician or therapist or a, a good running store, uh, a good running shoe store uh, when you're buying your shoes to make sure you're in the correct shoe because that by itself could, could be an issue. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is plantar fasciitis, and this is by far the most common cause of pain on the inside of the heel. Um, usually people, when it first starts, will say that they have a lot of pain right in this area, first few steps in the morning. They wake up, first couple steps, it's really sore through here. Usually it's not up so much in this area. The plantar fascia starts here and then extends out and attaches up around the metatarsal heads. Usually initially it hurts when they start to run, gets better as they keep running, and then, uh, and then eventually though it'll hurt through their entire run and eventually it'll keep them from running. Um, the uh, biomechanics include excessive pronation and excessive supination which we reviewed before and also what's a little different about this problem is that a tight heel cord or a tight Achilles tendon can really be an issue. Um, in terms of the treatment, rest and ice massage over that tender area is helpful initially. Um, heel cord and plantar uh, stretching are important which Lori will demonstrate in a second. We will try to get people into orthotics if they have really excessive pronation or heel lifts, more likely if they're a supinator. Um, night splints can be effective to hold that foot up at night so that people don't get uh, as much um, tendency for that fascia to contract with their feet in a down position through the evenings. Um, injections are helpful occasionally and surgery is rarely helpful, but usually we can cut this off um, earlier in the process. And so Lori's going to go over some of that stretching. One of the big stretches that would be important for you to do is the Achilles stretch or the stretch that catch, catches the back of your calf muscle. And the way you're going to stretch this is with your toe pointing forward you're gonna lean forward at your hip with your knee straight. and where, where I'm stretching is the back of my calf muscle. I can do this with my arch maintained or in what I call a neutral position. If I let my foot fall in, then what I'm really doing is throwing more of the stress across the inside of my foot. So I wanna hold it more in the position that I would like to keep it in, which is this position. I'll do this with the knee straight and I'll also do it with the knee bent. All right, Laurie, thank you very much. Well, everyone at UW Sports Medicine Clinic would like to wish you happy trails and uh, good luck with your running, and thanks again.